2016 marks the 20th anniversary of the Persona series. While it was initially a spin-off from Atlas's other big JRPG franchise, Shin Megami Tensei, Persona has since elapsed its parent series in popularity to become one of the most influential and talked about entries in its genre, rivaled only by heavy hitters such as Final Fantasy. So with Persona 5 on the horizon, I thought I'd give a brief overview of every game in this fantastic series, for those who may not be familiar with it or have only played its later installments. And don't worry, I'll keep it as spoiler-free as possible. Released in the United States as Revelations Persona for the PS1, this first entry in the series borrowed elements from its spiritual predecessor, Shin Megami Tensei If, such as its high school setting and its use of teenagers as protagonists. Die! After playing the rumoured Persona game and gaining supernatural abilities, our young heroes find their town infested with demons, which the player has the choice to negotiate with, or, using the magical attacks of their Persona, kill. Persona, the power to call on others within you. Sometimes merciful, sometimes cruel. These cells are embedded deep within your soul. This power will help you through your quest into the future. Persona is the physical manifestation of the psyche. It is based on the psychological ideas put forth by Kao Jung, who said that the Persona is a kind of mask designed on the one hand to make a definite impression upon others, and on the other to conceal the true nature of the individual. We live behind many masks, and you may at this very moment be living behind many masks. In the Persona games, this theme manifests itself as the characters have to change their persona to adapt to the enemies they are currently fighting. Come here. Elemental weaknesses and different skills and abilities make using a single persona throughout the entire game impractical. Players are encouraged to visit Igor in the Velvet Room to fuse personas together to create even stronger personas. Igor is a recurring character in the series and is the only character who appears in almost every game. This first installment is now quite dated and its old school difficulty makes it quite inaccessible to those who aren't accustomed to getting party wiped due to a spot of bad luck. An updated re-release for the PSP lowers the difficulty slightly, fixes the questionable Mid-90s translation, and reintroduces the Snow Queen quest which was cut from the original release. The Snow Queen quest is no simple side story and it takes the entire game to a completely different direction with different dungeons. However, the PSP version has an inferior soundtrack that replaces the moody, atmospheric tracks of the original with a more upbeat J-pop, inspired by later entries in the series. Persona 2 Innocent Sin was released for the PS1 in 1999, but the English-speaking world would not get to play the game until the PSP release in 2011. Its story ties loosely into the first game with characters such as Yukino Maizumi returning, but it has mostly a standalone plot that does not require prior knowledge of that game to be enjoyed. The story of this one explores the idea of rumours becoming reality, and follows another silent protagonist, his friends and a plucky magazine reporter, as they attempt to stop the mysterious figure known as Joker, who was thought to be the cause. This plays into the rumour mechanic that the player can use to bring their own rumours to life. Spreading a rumour that a certain shop sells weapons, for example, will give the player a place to buy better equipment. Newly introduced elements include an over-the-head perspective, a much wider variety of character animations, and a new method of fusing Persona at the Velvet Room. Instead of fusing Persona cards together like in the first game, the player must gather the required amount of cards from the Akana the Persona belongs to, and create it that way. Yep, there are two games called Persona 2, and they make up their own duology. Persona 2 Eternal Punishment takes place in an alternate timeline, for reasons I will not be spoiling in this video. Now unlike Innocent Sin, the PS1 version was released in English, but its PSP re-release was unfortunately not. Number 501, get away from that girl! Don't get 
get in my way! The protagonist of this game is Myra Mano, who was a party member in the previous game. There is a rumour going around that if you phone your own phone number, a being known as Joker will appear and kill your enemies. Myra is sent to write an article on this very phenomena when she's attacked by Joker, awakening her persona. This ties heavily into Innocent Sin as you might expect, but also ties much more into the first game this time around. Don't underestimate me, you bastard! It is the only entry in the series that I would not recommend as a starting point. Persona 3, released in 2006 for the PS2, is a radically different game from what we've seen in this series up until this point. The game follows another group of high school students who have formed the Specialized Extracurricular Execution Squad. C's for short. They are Persona users who have made it their mission to destroy monsters known as Shadows and end the Dark Hour, the hidden hour between one day and the next that reveals the tower called Tartarus, where the Shadows originate. Since all the action happens at night, you have to choose what you want to do during the day. You can study at the library to increase your knowledge, increase your persona's abilities by goofing around at the arcade, or hang out with friends, which leads us to social links. Social links are self-contained stories in and of themselves, which you can advance by hanging out with certain characters. It can be anyone from your main persona using party members, to that fat kid that just won't stop eating. These are more than simple side stories though, they are essential to boosting your persona's level in fusion. Speaking of fusion, the fusion system in this game is much more streamlined. Any persona you find in battle can be used right from the start. I'll show you my true the head shooting imagery in this game may give you the impression it's about teen suicide, but it's actually quite deceptive. The characters we follow are determined to live no matter what, and have decided to face death head on. The Grim Reaper is even an enemy that stalks you, and the words, Memento Mori, remember that you will die, are present during the opening movie. Persona! A PSP version was released which gives you the option to play as a female protagonist, but removes the animated cutscenes and simplifies the in-game cutscenes as a visual novel. And here we are at Persona 4, the entry in the series that pretty much everyone loves and has heard about at some point or another. You can count on you! Persona! Persona 4 refined the mechanics introduced in Persona 3 and once again gave us a really lovable cast of characters. Much more variety has been put into the dungeons and you can now control your party members, which was something that was AI controlled in Persona 3. Social links return and this time allow you to romance any of the female characters. This sad sack's been thrown from the big city out to the middle of nowhere like yesterday's garbage. And he's just as much of a loser here as he was there. The story follows a transfer student and his newfound friends at the small backwater town of Inaba that has recently been shaken by a bizarre string of murders. How could this happen? Rumours of a midnight channel circle the school of Yasagami High. It is said that you can see your soulmate if you watch it on a rainy night, but it is actually something much more sinister that can only be stopped by our young Persona users. Persona 4 has a lot to say on the epistemological themes of truth and knowledge. What is the truth? Should we know the full truth, or is it better to remain ignorant? The player must reach out to the truth if they ever wish to solve the case. In spite of all the murder in this game, it's not all doom and gloom. In fact, it's probably the most colourful and light-hearted entry in the series. This is exemplified in its fun, slice-of-life moments. I'm positive! But can't you smell the ocean? What smell? A re-release version for the PS Vita, titled Persona 4 Golden, adds additional story content, the ability to hang out at night, and a nice semi-HD resolution. The two Persona 4 Arena games are fighting games that are direct sequels to both Persona 3 and Persona 4. You get to see the P3 and P4 cast meet in a lengthy story mode and join forces for the first time. Tatsumi, the second year. And uh, who's this blue Daruma doll? 
Who are you calling a blue Daruma doll? Gameplay wise, they're also really good fighting games that can't just be dismissed as gimmicky caching titles. There's one enemy, and we have the first attack. Takuma, will you lend me your strength? Persona Q Shadows of the Labyrinth is a game released on the 3DS that, like the arena games, has the characters from P3 and P4 joining forces, only this time in classic turn-based RPG combat. Because of crazy time travel reasons, this game takes place at the same time as both of those games. Welcome. It plays very similar to Atrium Odyssey, but it is also reminiscent of Revelations Persona, particularly in how every character can switch personas and not just the protagonists. His story is very fanservice-y, with a lot of the characters losing most of the depth that they had in their innate games. For a more humorous caricature, Akihiko, for instance, is obsessed with protein, something he only mentioned like once in the original game. The finishing strike, my deadly stand. <laughs> it survived that. Good. Persona 4 Dancing All Night may seem like a silly little spin-off rhythm game, but its story mode is a canon sequel and it actually does a decent job of explaining why the characters are fighting shadows with dance moves this time around. Man, why dancing of all things? Persona! Yes, and finally we have Persona 5. We only have the trailers to go off, but it seems as if we play as a phantom thief, and there are stealth elements. Now I know I don't speak just for myself when I say that this slick visual style and cool attitude just looks awesome. So I'm going to end this video here with some awesome Persona 5 footage.